you just got a new iPhone or you have been an iPhone user for a while. It doesn't matter. In this video, I'm going to go from someone absolutely new to iPhone to beginner and then pro. So if you didn't just got yourself a new iPhone, you may want to skip ahead and use the chapters below. And let's go from beginner to pro. Okay, right, before we begin, you do know that you can transfer your data from your old phone, even if it was an Android, right? Yep, it moves over all your photos, messages and contacts and can even download all your apps if they're available and free on the App Store. So if you don't want to start afresh, make sure to select transfer from Android while setting up your new iPhone. Okay, all set up and done. Time to get to know all the gestures first. Swipe up from the bottom to exit apps and come back to the home screen. Swipe left or right at the home bar to switch between last used apps. Or swipe up and hold to bring up the multitasking view. And inside an app, you can tap the back button at the top left or swipe from the left to go back. Now, if you ever find that your phone is not ringing for alerts, check the mute switch on the side of your iPhone. Now on the home screen, by default, you have all your apps on these pages and the app library at the very end, which has all your apps categorized and sorted based on how much you use them. So if you want, you can disable some home screen pages, press and hold on an empty area, and then tap these three dots to get an overview, uncheck all the pages you don't want to see and tap done. Also, you can add widgets from up here if you want to add them to your home screen. Okay, to find anything on your phone, swipe down on the home screen to bring up search. Here you can quickly find and launch apps or search for files or anything on your phone or on the web. And as you start using it more and more, the predictions do get better with time, so you don't even have to type what you're looking for. Okay, now on to some defaults that should not be defaults in settings. But before that, quick settings are always here at the top right in control center. You can toggle your data, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, lock screen rotation, or adjust volume or brightness anytime. Just swipe down from the top right. Okay, in the settings, first is autocorrect. Next is keyboard and lock sounds, which I like to disable as well. And okay, so I did a whole video about it. If you didn't set it up during the initial setup, turn on dark mode in display and brightness. I like to go dark from sunset to sunrise. And if you aren't using true tone, turn on night shift to limit blue light at night. And yes, I like to turn off rays to wake as it results in a lot of accidental touches. And you can just tap the screen to wake it up. Now, if you don't want your phone to wake you up in the middle of your sleep, set up do not disturb while you're there. I have mine scheduled to match my routine. And you can also turn it on from the control center whenever you want. Now this will silence all your notifications and messages and your phone will not light up with every notification. It will also reject all your calls. So if you want, you can select your favorites and remain available to them. Okay, another setting that you especially need on bigger iPhones is reachability. You can just search everything from up here if you don't want to go digging through the menus. Okay, now just swipe down at the bottom edge whenever you need to reach up to bring the whole display halfway down. Trust me, it's way better than risking your phone for a fall. Okay, that was all set up and done. Now it's time for some things that you may not know even if you're using an iPhone for a long time. Okay, starting with the keyboard tips. First is just to swipe instead of tap to type. I know it feels weird at first, but trust me, it's hard to go back once you get used to it. Just slide your thumb from letter to letter to form words. It's way faster and better one-handed. Okay, and whenever you need to fix a typo, press and hold on the space bar to move the cursor precisely. Or you can just pick it up and place it wherever you want. Now when you need to enter numbers in between your text, instead of switching the keyboard and then tapping the number and then going back, just press and hold on 1, 2, 3 and then slide your finger to the number or symbol you want to enter and it will save you 3 taps. I know it feels minor but quickly makes up for it. And the last keyboard tip is to use text replacements like OMW for on my way, you get the idea. I use it for my email address which comes in super handy and my Instagram link which if you haven't followed yet, go check the description. Okay, next up is this category of what I like to call time savers, like sliding on these little dots at the bottom of your home screen to quickly move between pages. And not only on the home screen, it works wherever you see those dots, like in weather, or like quickly sharing your screenshot by tapping and holding on the thumbnail, or typing I am at in iMessages to send your current location, or to even go straight to the app with a notification inside a folder. And now for some real pro tips, did you know that you can tap with two fingers to open links in a new tab? or find words on a web page using the find option in the share sheet or even better by just typing the word in the address bar and then find on page or like grabbing the scroll bar to navigate pages faster or just tap at the top to go back up or instead of tapping and holding to copy something just pinch with three fingers to copy again to cut 
and then spread with three fingers to paste. And the infamous back tap option introduced in iOS 14, you can set what happens when you double tap or triple tap the back of your phone to launch apps, shortcuts, or select from a list of actions in there. And for the times when you need to sign something real quick, go deep in the markup menu to add and save your signature in there. And the last tip is for when your iPhone just refuses to respond or gets stuck anytime, press volume up, then down, and then hold the side button to force reboot and bring it back to life. Okay, that was everything I picked up using an iPhone over the years. What's the one tip that you think everyone should know? Drop it down in the comments. Leave a like if this video was any good and share this with someone who needs to see this. Subscribe if you don't want to miss new videos. Okay, I'll see you next time.